What's up everyone, this is Josh from Eastwest Healing and today I want to talk about Accutane. We get this question all the time, but before we jump in, please like this video, show us a little support. Please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button so every single week when we put out a video on Wednesdays, you get notified. Let's jump in. Now here's the thing. Yes, a lot of people have taken Accutane and a lot of people do it without really knowing the implications. Remember, anytime you put something in your mouth, there could always be a consequence. And a lot of the times what we're seeing now is people are seeing those consequences 10, 20, even 30 years later. And here's why. Accutane is a synthetic form of 13 cis retinol, a mega dose um, that shrinks the subcutaneous glands in the skin, decreases oil production, hence you don't get acne. Of course, there's more to it, but that's the gist, right? Now, the problem with this is what we see in people is they end up with a blown up retinol metabolism in the liver. And what happens is they end up with high retinol in the liver. You see this in a full Monty and high copper. Why? Because you need retinol 13 cis from foods, very different, not synthetic, to metabolize copper and load it into ceruloplasm, which is bioavailable copper to do what it's designed to do. So when you take Accutane in the synthetic form, you blow up retinol metabolism, you affect copper metabolism, and you have the illusion of a vitamin A toxicity, you have the illusion of a copper toxicity, but it's there because the Accutane blew up the whole pathway, and now you can't essentially make ceruloplasm, which is bioavailable copper. We should be getting retinol from our foods. We should be getting it from dairy that doesn't have synthetic A and D, right? A clean dairy. Eggs, we should be getting it from organ meats and fatty fish, right? Fatty fish like salmon, herring, mackerel, and sardines, right? All retinol is convert is kind of metabolized or converted into retinol aldehyde, which is converted into three retinoic acids. 9, 11, 13, cis, right? 13, cis. This 13, cis is the most important piece when we talk about copper metabolism, but I'm not talking about the synthetic form of 13 cis because it blows all of this up. I'm talking about the 13 cis we get kind of from our foods, right? How we break that down into the 13 cis because this 13 cis plays a huge role. And think of 13 cis as just retinol. Retinol is from animal tissue. It's in the fat in animal tissue. It's not beta carotene, right? We have a video on this. It is from animal tissue, the animals that I just mentioned. And this 13 cis plays a huge role because this retinol loads copper into ATP7A in the liver, right? So we can produce ceruloplasm. That's a huge role of retinol from the foods we eat. Because now we can convert that copper, let's say convert and metabolize it, to, so we don't have the solution of copper toxicity. Copper's not the problem. You don't have enough retinol or you have altered retinol metabolism. Retinol also plays a role from our foods um, in producing transferrin, which helps us recycle iron. Remember, iron doesn't regulate iron. Copper recycles iron, and we need retinol to metabolize copper into ceruloplasmin so we can activate hephastin, ferrooxidase, and ferroporin in the hepatocytes in the liver and pterocytes in the gut, etc. This allows us to recycle iron through the reticular endothelial system, the RES system, which is your iron recycling system in the body, which recycles up to 24 milligrams a day. You don't need iron. You don't need supplements, right? You don't need infusions because iron doesn't regulate iron. If you're not seeing in the blood, it means it's high in the tissue because you don't have enough copper to recycle iron or enough retinol to produce transferrin so you can recycle iron. So when we produce this ceruloplasmin through retinol, through loading copper into ATP and ATP 7A in the liver, right? The ceruloplasm plays another huge role. It activates oxygen in our cells. And this is very important because this allows us to produce energy. This allows us to put money in the bank, right? Create a metabolic environment because you're either producing energy or you're producing prooxidants. You're either producing energy and putting in the in money in the bank or you're accruing debt. It's that simple. And we want to produce energy. We come into this world as a cell. We multiply and we're a conglomeration of cells. There's 70, 72 trillion of them in your body. And copper can activate oxygen in every single one of them to create this metabolic environment. At the same time, ceruloplasm allows us to produce tons of copper to antioxidants, catalase, cytochrome oxidase, glutathione peroxidase, superoxide dismutase, etc. That's really important because that supports energy production. That allows us to put out little fires. That allows us to not rely on supplements. That allows us to create this nice metabolic healing environment. Remember, if you're not producing energy, you're producing prooxidants because now you're not producing antioxidants. 
And that leads to oxidative stress, inflammation, calcification, cell death, disease, right? This is the path people are going down. Ceruloposmin also plays a role in simulating TRH so we can produce thyroid hormone, but also retinol is carried to the liver via the TTR protein so we can convert thyroid hormone. So you can see the implications of taking Accutane when you blow up copper metabolism, when you blow up retinol metabolism. Now you're going to affect how the thyroid produces thyroid hormone and how it converts thyroid hormone because you're not going to have retinol in that TTR protein anymore. You're going to see how we can't load copper into ATP 7A and produce ceruloplasmin. So now we can't produce energy and now we can't produce perox uh, antioxidants. Now we're creating a peroxidative environment. And lastly, you can see if we don't have retinol, we can't, number one, produce ceruloplasmin. And number two, we can't produce transferrin. So now we can't recycle iron. We're told we have anemia, which is low iron in the blood. Look at the seesaw high iron in the tissue because we don't have copper to recycle it through the RES system. We can't activate those enzymes and we can't get the iron into the blood and recycle through the system. We see this all the time with people, right? Over and over again, 10 to 20, 30 years later. And as I mentioned, every time you put something in your mouth, a medication, a synthetic supplement like iron, vitamin D, synthetic supplements that, that are, you know, retinol palmitate, calcium, zinc, glyphosate, high fructose corn syrup, all these things affect copper metabolism. And if you affect copper metabolism, you affect your cell, energy production, antioxidants, iron recycling, your thyroid, and the list goes on. So this is a big topic. Check the description below. If you do have any questions, please put them in the comments. And as always, thank you for tuning in. I'm out.